Okay, I'm just putting this ident in just because it makes me laugh. Well done, CBBs. This is Mr. Marsh. Okay, um, let's do a presentation on hard water for GCSE further. Uh, hard water, what is it? Is it good? Is it bad? Uh, how is it made? Um, that'll do. Oh, and how do you fix it? How do you get rid of it once you've got it? Oh, makes it sound like a disease. It's not what I meant. Anyway, uh, the way it's made, fairly simple. It's made between the chemical reaction of a rock containing calcium or magnesium ions and acid rain. Now remember it doesn't have to be polluted to be acid rain. All rain is ever so slightly acidic. In fact rain naturally is about pH 5.6. Remember pure water is pH 7 so it's neutral but acid rain is, is uh, a natural phenomenon. Pollution just makes it more acidified. So if you've got rock that contains calcium and magnesium ions that can react with acid then you're going to end up to having a chemical reaction. Now water reacts with the carbon dioxide in the air that's naturally present in the atmosphere to make carbonic acid. Carbonic acid partially dissociates in water and that means that it's a weak acid. So acid rain is only slightly acidic. That's why erosion of rocks takes a very long time. Uh, but when it does dissociate, it dissociates into the hydrogen carbonate ion and hydrogen ions, also known as a proton, because it's a proton, by definition it is an acid because it's a proton donor. Now if the rock happens to be limestone, or you've been to any limestone cliffs before, you know what it looks like. It's, it's mainly made up of the chemical calcium carbonate. Uh, that contains an awful lot of calcium therefore. And when it reacts with the acid rain, it makes the soluble compound calcium hydrogen carbonate. That means that the previously insoluble calcium carbonate is now able to dissolve in water and be washed into watercourses. This is my picture of a watercourse because it's got a fish in it. Uh, here's the formula for calcium hydrogen carbonate. AQ means it's aqueous, it means it's dissolved in water. So calcium carbonate, which is a solid, obviously, because it's a rock, reacts with carbonic acid which comes from the rain. The rain then is either washed or falls directly onto the rock and forms calcium hydrogen carbonate. And because it's an acid carbonate reaction you also form water and carbon dioxide gas. Okay, so as you can imagine, you've got a rock uh, that has got, um, um, I don't know, it could be a cliff, it could be any exposed rock or rock that can have the acidic water, the acidic rainwater exposed uh, to it somehow, it could be rained on or can be washed onto it, is going to wash down as a result of this chemical reaction and you're going to extract the water from the river or watercourse. Obviously, it's going to go via. Uh, water treatment works, but eventually it's going to end up in your house. You're going to put it through various appliances. You want to use the water, don't you? You're going to put it in things like washing machines, and uh, you're going to need to make cups of tea or coffee. It means you're going to heat the water up in a washing machine, you're going to heat the water up in a kettle, um, and you're going to heat it up in your central heating system, anywhere where you're going to heat the water up you're going to start to uh, change the chemical composition of the water. I'm going to show you how that works. Um, alternatively, you might want to, I don't know, keep clean. If you use soap and you live in a hard water area, you'll know that soap forms a scum because you've got sodium stearate and the calcium 
that's uh, dissolved, the calcium ions that are dissolved in the water form calcium stearate which is insoluble and precipitates out and that floats on the top because it's less dense than water and you end up with this horrible scum that makes baths and things difficult to clean um, whereas the kettles and the washing machines end up getting lime scale that reduces their efficiency because lime scale is not a, an efficient conductor of heat not a good conductor of heat now the solutions to this this is the, the the problem you don't always want hard water even though it tastes better and is better for you it's not good for the appliances it's not good for washing in um, temporary hard water is temporary because if you heat it up the calcium hydrogen carbonate will decompose back into calcium carbonate again and water and carbon dioxide but as we know calcium carbonate was made uh, makes up the majority of limestone and calcium carbonate is nowhere near as soluble as the hydrogen carbonate in fact we could describe it as insoluble and so this will precipitate out as a solid and deposit itself on the heating elements or the hot pipes or whatever heating the water because that's where the chemical reaction happens and that's where you get the solid deposited on the heating element as lime scale the water's a liquid and the carbon dioxide will be a gas and the calcium hydrogen carbonate is dissolved but when it heats up it becomes a solid and that removes the hardness doesn't it so this is a way of removing the hardness from temporary hard water is just heat it up permanent hard water slightly different because even if you heat permanent hard water up it's not got the hydrogen carbonate ion in and that means that it's not going to be broken down by the heat so it's not going to be removed by heating the first method you could use is very quick very simple and very easy is you can use washing soda washing soda is sodium carbonate now like all group ones uh, compounds sodium carbonate is soluble and if you dissolve it in water you'll end up with the sodium ions formed and you'll also end up with the aqueous carbonate ions now the aqueous carbonate ions are going to come in contact with your calcium ions that are dissolved as hard water so what happens is a chemical reaction between the two you end up with this precipitation reaction the calcium ions collide with or bump into the carbonate ions and you end up with a solid precipitate of calcium carbonate isn't it clever now that's very clever because now it's a solid it's not dissolved anymore so it's no longer going to contribute to the hard water a slightly more expensive and a little bit more sophisticated method is using ion exchange this is where you attach sodium ions or you could for a slightly more ex expensive resin you could use hydrogen ions they are available um, you attach the sodium ions to a non-soluble surface such as a zeolite or a resin this is the sodium ions attached and what happens is you flush the calcium ions over the top of the resin and the calcium ions attach themselves they displace the sodium from their position on the resin and the sodium ions end up being dissolved in solution and the calcium ions end up attaching themselves to the resin and they remove themselves therefore from solution the sodium replaces it, it's literally a swap that's why it's called an exchange resin but sodium doesn't contribute to hard water so you're removing the hard water by exchanging which ion is dissolved so there's your solutions we now know how it's made and how it's formed and then how to get rid of it. In summary, you've got calcium carbonate is your main source, but calcium and magnesium ions are the responsible ions, the ions responsible, sorry, for hard water. Calcium ions can be precipitated out by using soda or you could use an ion exchange resin. Temporary hard water, however, is easily removed by uh, using the method we described earlier which is by heating it if you heat it up it'll break back down into or we could say decompose into calcium carbonate water and carbon dioxide because the calcium carbonate is a solid 
there should be a S, S next to the CaCO3 whoops um, you end up getting rid of the hard water so there we go I hope you've got something valuable for that and thank you for watching